So I want to ask you, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your name, what you do for those who doesn't know you? I mean, maybe there there is a few, but just, you know, a little overview. Okay. What's up? My name is Matt Alonzo. I am a filmmaker. Um, I've been shooting since I was eight years old, editing since I was about 10, uh, professionally for the last 12 years. And I'm most notably, mo my most notable work is music videos. That's what seems to get everybody excited. Although I've done pretty much every type of project besides a long form narrative. And uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think it's possible to get into industry or make a living from video making without entering the film school? So right now, I, I believe that you can get into the industry uh, without film school. A lot of the people that I came up with, um, you know, there was about half of us that went to film school or some sort of college and then the other half who didn't and kind of learned on their own. Sorry. Um, so so there was always that there was always that little divide, you know, and those people thought they knew it better. We thought we knew it better. For me, college was uh, film school for me was something that was keep. For me, film school really kept me on track. Um, I didn't have a ton of money, so I couldn't really afford to go to film school. So I went to a city college and I was kind of just messing around. And uh, I started getting really good grades on my buddy's projects who was actually in film school. And um, he told my parents like, hey, you have to figure out what you have to do, get this guy over here. Uh, so when my parents decided to let me go to film school or pay for film school, I knew it was like super serious. So I took it really serious. So I got the most out of it and I wouldn't be where I am today without it. So that's why I, I th for me personally, there's no way I could be where I'm at without that three years of education, that three years of just basically just har harnessing my craft and, and like, you know, growing up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I think right now there's, just grab a camera and go out there and shoot and you know, YouTube, there's so many, um, you know, uh, so many classes and, and things available. You just really have to know what you're looking for because I feel like everyone's looking for like the editing techniques and like these camera techniques. But, you know, for my film school is really about, you know, storytelling and visual storytelling with, um, you know, with, with, with images and, and really just all the things from color science to frame, you know, to, to the framing. Um, those are the things that really matter, but some people just have it inherently. So I, I definitely think you don't have to go to film school. And right now I don't even know a film school to recommend because they're so college is so expensive and I don't really know, no one that I would say, yeah, this is the one, you know? So. Yeah. Tell me about the money. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, I mean, I, I, I guess know. it's all, it's. Yeah. I think yeah. it's also different. Like it depends like in which country you're, you're studying, because for example, I'm studying right now in London and I, I think it's different than in America because here they leave you to do everything by yourself. Like yeah. they're not, they're kind of giving you the project, but they're not leading you that much. Yeah. I don't know how it's in America. Like, well, I went to film school 12 years ago and my <laughs> film school was, was really expensive. Um, like I, I think I ended up, it was three years BA. It was a full year round. And I think I ended up, it was like 85, but some of my friends were like 120 because they took out money to live and everything. So it was a lot of money, you know? And some of my friends actually, there's like two or three from my graduating class that actually ended up in Hollywood or doing something with the degree. Everyone else pretty much ended up back, back home working at, you know, a cell phone store or something. So for those people, I really felt bad for because I felt like they loved movies. Like they loved watching movies. They didn't really love making movies and they just spent 120,000, you know? Um, but for me, you know, at the time I didn't really like school because I'm like, yo, just give us a camera. Let us go shoot. We know what we're doing. But for the first year we had to take slides. We had to take, um, you know, we had to tell stories in like five images. We, we, had to, we got to use a light meter. We, we shot on film. We, then we shot on 16 millimeter. And so all those things just, I mean, I, 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 I commend my school and I'm so thankful that I was able to go at the time I did. But, um, but yeah, it put me in the hole. So, you know, some, some kids, I know kids who just said, forget that. I'm going to take half of that money and just go buy a camera, buy, buy equipment and, and do it that route. I don't really see that route being as beneficial because the, the cameras just become obsolete when, when the new one comes out. So it's really hard. Not that my degree meant anything, but just the education, the connections. And for me, the time to mature and kind of grow up a little bit. <laughs> and have you tried 
every role uh, in the school or you were focused on one role for the whole time? Uh, when I was in film school, you want to, when I was in film school, they actually had us, you know, focus on different uh, roles. But at that time, which was, like I said, 12 years ago, it was so different. So they really wanted us to specialize. So at that time I was specializing in editing. My first year was editing. And then I started look, making all these really bad directors look good. And I was like, forget this. I've been shooting my whole life. I'm just going to direct. I can edit my own stuff as well. And so then the next two years I, I focused on directing and obviously I've been editing everything. I've edited 300, 400 projects since I got out of school. So, so, but I did learn how to produce a AD, um, set design. I mean, everything DP. So that was, that was fun. It was just fun to just kind of, you know, cause you want to be able to have that vantage point to be able to explain whether you're, you know, depending on what um, position you are, you still want to be able to communicate. So you want to know a little bit about that other position so that you're able to, you know, um, communicate properly. So that was fun. You that often do one man show, right? So, so what do you think, what's your point of view? What are the positives and what are the negatives? Well, I mean, for me, for me, I didn't, for me growing up, I really didn't have a lot. My parents were, you know, middle to low, you know, low class like we were just kind of you know i didn't know that we were like that at all but you know i had everything i i absolutely wanted but um i didn't have a lot of things to to make films or to make things with you know i just had a hand-me-down camera or you know hand-me-down lights or just whatever whatever was around it you know so i got used to making um making something look really big out of nothing really and um and so it does have its advantages. I mean, I can grab a camera and I can feel, I feel confident just within myself. I can grab my cell phone and I know I can go and, and shoot and, and edit. It's not something I, I prefer, if it, you know, for me, filmmaking is a team effort, it, especially when you get to like a certain level, there's so many, so many, you know, key positions that bring their own element. And without that, it just doesn't, it lacks that 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 power, you know? Um, is it, is it, are you able to reproduce it? Possibly, it's going to take you a lot of time, as far as pre-production. If you're a one-man show, like a lot of time to to, to emulate what something else, somebody else might do with a, a you know, twenty-person crew or ten-person crew. Um, um, it just depends on what it is, too. You know what I mean? But like when you're talking, you're talking, you know, uh, set design, wardrobe, DP. You know, you got you know, electric. You got ten people on the electric crew. You know what I mean? You got your, you got your you know, your jib arm, you got all these things moving, which, you know, a lot of my sets are like that as well, you know? So I don't prefer to go out by myself, but I know that if I, I, I do do stuff by myself, like um, actually I was in London with Nipsey Hussle, you know, five years, eight years ago, and I shot that all by myself. And I shot a whole, you know, whole documentary series by myself. Uh, Cause I was one of the first ones to shoot on a 5D and, and the 70 um, for like, you know, music videos and, and documentaries and all that type of stuff. So. Um, once I knew I could shoot like that, I was, I was fine, but it still, it still lacks the, if you look at something like Celebration or Martians vs. Goblins and you look at something that I shot by myself, you can t totally tell there's a difference. So it's a know? different level, right? Because I wanted yeah, to absolutely. ask you, like, if, if you see some differences when you are by yourself, like in the product, in the video, yep. or you would not even notice. Yeah, it's, it's, well... It just depends on what it is, you know what I mean? Like celebration, the, the video with game, it was an uh, exterior video. The and it was just a picnic. The video looks like a picnic, but it was three days. We had 20, 20 Ks out there. We had 40 by silks, you know, we had two Alexas, you know, we had a full, I mean, it was a full 40, 50 person crew, you know? Um, and so that's really the look of that compared to me just grabbing a camera and going shooting a, you know, a picnic or a, a barbecue. It, it, you know yeah you know it, but a lot of people just don't don't even they're like how did you have so many people they're just hanging out at the park i'm like you know and i show them behind the scenes but there's there are some things though you know that like a lot of my first videos I, I wouldn't say i shot one man band but it was like two or three of us you know you don't need a ton of people but you definitely need a couple a couple creative um creative heads to, to collaborate with mm. can you imagine like nowadays you would shoot some project on on your phone instead of the professional camera do i do i no if you do it but can you imagine to do it like oh would yeah you do it? i would do it absolutely i think you know for me equipment doesn't really matter i i really don't care about the equipment i'll shoot on anything and people always ask me what's your favorite camera i'm like whatever works you know obviously 
each project, depending on what the narrative is or who the target mar- you know, target audience is or, or what the, the overall, you know, feel and vibe I want to go with, it's going to depend on lenses and, and this, like, and, and this and that. But as far as like overall favorite, like anything that works, you know, and I have no problem shooting on a phone. I remember I was in film school and now we're, I was my senior year and, they, and we had little chocolate phones. I don't know if you remember, like there was a little chocolate phone. It just had a little boop. And our teacher was like, hey, you see this? You're going to end up watching movies on this. You're going to end up watching videos and you're going to be, fi-. And we, we all looked at our phones and just started laughing. <laughs> we were like, you were out of your mind. And then, you know, a couple of years later, we were like, Wow. Um, but yeah, a couple of my friends, a couple of my friends actually shot music videos on it. You know, they'll use like certain apps, film apps and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, one of my buddies, Taj, he shot a video for, for Fabulous, which is a pretty big rapper. And he shot it all on an iPhone. Um, oh. So yeah, I mean, there's movies that shot on the iPhone now. So, you know, and especially if you can find a way to make it something that's that that is almost like a POV or something where the phone is actually like, you know, used in it that's pretty cool too but like as far as like having your camera and then having like a 50 millimeter lens with this and that and then you're like a ronin and it's like i'm like what's the point i see people do that i'm just like at that point it doesn't make any sense you know at that point it doesn't make any sense yeah because it's not phone anymore yeah exactly you know it's retarded but you know teach his own teach his own what do you think what do you think are the more most important things during the during during uh making the music video What are the like the most important things to keep in mind? Okay, well, uh, the most important things to keep in mind when creating a music video. First, you want to figure out. First, you want to do your, you know, your research, your market research. Figure out who your artist is. Yeah, you may think you know them, but you really need to dive deep and figure out, you know, some of their last videos. Really, just kind of do do your research and, and figure out who their brand is, who their brand is now. Uh, who their brand was. The last thing you want to do is write an idea that they've already done. You know, you really want to study that person. Not not necessarily you want to emulate or copy anything, but you just want to get familiar with, you know, what what their brand encapsulates. And then you want to figure out who their target market is. Do they want to cross genres? Do they do they want to you know go to the same you know same audience, um, but a little bit harder? I mean, what's their message? What what do they want to do? Because at, at the end of the day, that's all the music video is is just another advertisement for that brand. Um, to, to hit a certain demographic and to convey a message, whether that's, oh, they're cool or, oh, they have all the girls or they have all the money, whatever it is, it's it's a message, you know? And, and so you just want to figure out from the, either the artist or the label or whoever's going to be the, uh, you know, the point person kind of, not necessarily, they probably won't even know, but you just want to, you know, ask some questions and just get, gather some information about their brand because that's really what it's about. You can have this really cool idea and like I have you tied upside down and like all this stuff and it's like an R&B song and it just doesn't fit at all. So, and a lot of, a lot of the younger directors that I, I work with sometimes have, they're so stuck on an idea that they'll just like replace it with any artist and it just doesn't work. So it's really, you want to just create the, the best idea for that brand or for that artist um, and, and figure out what they want to do with it, what they're trying to do. So that's, that's, that's my, That's what I would say is the most important thing. So the pre-production is for you really important, right? Because you are, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, the most important part. Do you enjoy it? Well, I mean, you know, the way it goes normally, especially nowadays, it's kind of like, hey, um, here's the song. They'll, they'll send you a solicitation and uh, sometimes they'll be like, hey, Wiz Khalifa, 40, 40,000 shoots in, two, shoots in you know, a week and a half. I need treatment by tomorrow. So you know, you have to write an idea for pre-production. Yeah. Well, you write the idea that gets approved. Say, say you write an idea, it gets approved maybe in a day or two, and then you get like four days of pre-production, you know, and, but at that time, what you, you know, what, for me anyways, what I'll do is I'll end up writing an idea that I don't need a ton of pre-production. I'm not going to write, I'm not going to write an idea that I know I have to shoot in five days. That's going to be like a time piece where everybody needs wardrobe or we need a certain set, or I need to build a set. You know, I'm not going to do that for something like that. Um, sometimes you get solicitations and they'll say, hey, it needs to shoot by, you know, a month or whatever. And those are a little bit better, although they usually don't even pick the person until like a week before anyway. So mm. it's always a mess, but uh, you just got to prepare for that, prepare your team for that. And uh, pre-production is great if you get the opportunity. But, you know, sometimes it's hard because, you know, you have your DP, you have all these people coming in and you want to do scouts, you want to do all these things, but you got to pay them for that. So the budget goes away really quickly in in And I know there's going to be some enthusiastic filmmakers going, oh, man, I would never charge for a scout. 
well, it's not your 15th year or your 20th year. And I'm calling in a DP who's, you know, five, 10 years, my senior. And I got to, Hey, you want to come over here and scout for free? Like, I don't even, it's just kind of a, you know, it's yeah. just etiquette, you know, at that point. Um, uh, so, it, you know, it, it gets a little, it gets a little sticky, but you want to make the best project uh, regardless. And as a director, I mean, my job is to shot list. I'll go scout the location. I'll take pictures. I'll put it all together so that I can walk my DP through it. If, if we don't have the money to scout or whatever, um, but I'll do as much as I can. So pre-production is important and I try to maximize. I usually go to bed like at four o'clock in the morning before the shoot date. So <laughs> Everyone, you know, during the interview, they say like, oh yeah, you know, like something in the meaning, like I don't sleep. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I don't sleep at all. I slept like an hour last night, so. Oh my God. So we appreciate you here with us. <laughs> oh, yeah, no problem. We appreciate you guys. Uh, um, do you also write script before before the shooting or do you have only the storyboard? Um, so, I mean, like like I just said, there's not a lot of time. I've only storyboarded one time, uh, maybe twice, in my entire 12, 13 year career. And those two times were with, uh, were with a brand when I believe it was Ciroc or another vodka company was actually paying for the video. So they wanted to see how their product was going to be integrated into the video. They actually wanted to see it. So we had to have a storyboard mm -hmm. artist put together, you know, a mock-up. But other than that, it just, there's not enough time to, to, you know, you get four or five days, you know? And for me, I'm more about, uh, you know, I've been editing since I was eight years old. So I'm really, you know, obviously this is what I do. So I shoot to edit and I had kind of have a routine now down that, um, it kind of covers me with all my bases and everything. So unless it's a narrative shoot, which even nowadays, it just, you don't get the time anymore. And, and it's just, it's really hard, you know? So, um, so no, we don't storyboard at all. And, uh, you know, I, I, to be honest, I don't even, I don't even like writing a shot list because if you, if you notice like a music video, unless it's like, um, you know, a narrative type of piece, uh, or rock or something, but I mean, a rap video cuts every three seconds, five seconds. So you got to write five, you know what I mean? So, yeah. So it was just so draw, draw, draw. And yeah. Yeah. I just, it, you know, cause I write shot lists the way that, you know, you actually write like a movie shot list. That's the way I was taught. So, it, you know, I actually have a couple of them from my first music videos, but um, I remember I showed up to one of my first music videos with the game. Um, he's a rapper and uh, I was, I was young and I had a huge, I mean, I'm talking like this big, it was a shot list and I'm like, Hey, okay. And then he's just like, dude, what do you want me to do? And then after that, I kind of was like, okay, I'm gonna keep it in my head. I'm not gonna show up with the whole pole binder. So. Yeah. Maybe if they ask for it, then maybe it's better. Like they can't imagine no. what, no, okay. No, because I mean, most, I gotta remember all these artists are entrusting you with their brand. So mm -hmm. they don't want to ask you to look at a piece of paper. If they want to ask you a question, you need to be able to deliver, deliver that answer to them looking directly in their eye and you need to stand by even if you don't even believe it or if you don't even know what you're talking about but you, you they're entrusting their brand and they're saying oh here you you can have my brand and you get to spend all this money and make something cool for it so uh you know they trust you you know and yeah if, if i haven't met an artist who's really that into it like usually once they trust me, they're like, whatever you want to do, Matt, just tell me what you want to do. I already know it's going to be crazy. So I don't have to explain it to them. I explain it to my crew. And, and most of that time, yeah. like, that's already done. But um, yeah, I don't, I, I rarely ever have to show it to the artists because, you know, they just want to perform. And, and my job is really just to, to, to get the best performance out of them that day. I don't want to confuse them with too much information. Mm. So talking about your first music video, how you felt, were you, were you like chilled or under the really for like very uh, pressured or how, how did you feel i mean you know it was exciting it was like the first it was like it was like felt like christmas or like um you know I played football my whole life so it felt like a game day you know it felt like finally we were here we had practiced for so long and i was just ready to go you know i was ready to go i'm one of my first videos was the game video i told you about we had two red ones first music video I ever shot on a red uh cook lenses you know we and we had like a crew that was just all at a film school all just kind of patched together none of us had ever done anything and uh and yeah we knocked that knocked that video out of the park for interscope and then we did soldier boy turn, turn my swag on and, and <laughs> i was hamilton fly like a g6 i did like all number one videos like back to back to back and they were all relatively cheap but it was exciting it was it was fun you know something new and i was finally being able to show my talent to the world and that was really important and obviously being able to do it with all your friends and growing growing tighter uh, with each passing video was was uh, was amazing as well so uh yeah i was really excited I, I can't say i was ever nervous i don't think i was ever nervous because by that time i had already i i was so 
well prepared and I could, I, I could already see the vision in my head. I could see the video. So I didn't, I, there was nothing to be nervous about. I was a little frustrated when things didn't go as, as planned, which they don't, but uh, I didn't know that till, you know, a couple of years down the line. So, um, but no, I was excited. It was fun. You know, it was really fun. And when you were starting, were you approaching people or they found you somehow? Um, I mean, I worked at a record company. Well, I graduated from school. I was doing internships and then my internship turned into a full-time job. And the, the record company ended up folding and he, he kept me on staff to do like infomercials. So uh, I quit that and I was like, I just was done. My car got repossessed. I was, I was dead broke. You know, like I had just quit like a really high paying job. And I just walked out, you know, I wasn't growing. I was already the top position and I was like, there's nothing here for me, you know? So uh, car got repossessed. I was, I was dead broke. And so I started Craigslisting. I did start hitting people up. My space was really big back then. So I started like, you know, my space and, yeah. Um, YouTube was barely getting going and uh, I just happened to get a call. They said, hey, come down to San Diego. Uh, we'll give you 150 bucks to shoot this concert. No problem. We drove down there and uh, Lil Wayne was the was the headlining act for this for this group that I was filming. They were actually, you know, they're opening up for him. Um, and so I ended up, I loved Lil Wayne at the time. So I talked to the management and everyone talked to the management and uh, eventually they let us shoot. And I took it home that night. I edited it, put it on YouTube, Lil Wayne official music video. And then that pretty much blew up and uh, DJ Ski yeah. hit me up. And then we connected for Ski TV, which was one of the first like uh, YouTube channels um, back back in, what was it, 2008? Um, so then once I teamed up with, with Ski, Ski had all the connections, you know, because he was a DJ, he was in, into marketing and advertisements, and then I had all the skills. So we just, you know, that's how it just kind of kept coming in. And, and we knew people at Interscope and Warner Brothers. And and um, so at that point, I, you know, we didn't really ever go look for work, but um, but I could tell him an artist I wanted to work with, and then he would he would, he would would go out and get him. So that, that was always good. Like when you, let's say like you make the project, right? Like on the budget and like some video and then you want to like what's the next step of that because you want to promote it to the bigger production oh or? yeah i mean well it's just a, so, so i mean it really depends on what how much the budget is i mean for me at this point pretty much anything under like 10 to 15 thousand i'll do on my own like i'll do on my own and bring a producer in and we'll just do it in-house yeah. uh you know all my videos over like 30 40 a hundred 150,000. Then I bring in a production company. Uh, usually I, I work with Happy Place, um, and Tara Wazabi, and uh, they were they were great. And, you know, I mean, because one thing that a lot of people may not know is that, you know, if say you get approved for a, you know, $100,000 budget or $80,000 budget, the record label actually gives you half of the money up front. So you had to cover the other half as a production company. And, and um, most of the time though, you're going to have a production company already in talks because the, the record label is probably not going to just say, Hey kid, do you want a hundred grand? <laughs> you know, um, usually they're going to have somebody that they're going to, you know, that they know that they're going to kind of try like triangle in, or um, you're going to have kind of have somebody, you kind of have to have somebody that's ready to go. Or they're not going to give you that type of budget. They're going to give you like five, $8,000 things. And then, and then as you progress and get a production company and then, then maybe they'll give you bigger jobs. But, um, but yeah, I mean, everything that, that was big, I did it through them. Um, and yeah, so that was kind of how, how I ran my stuff. And it was, it was great. I mean, because at that point I could only, fo I, I could just focus on, on directing and, um, and, and they did all the, but, you know, they, Hey, do you like this? Do you like this? Do you like this location or this location? Yeah. You make less money because you're not the production company. You're not taking all the other percentages, but for me, it was, it was, it was well worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, do you usually use a natural light or do you work with a natural light or you use? I mean, I'm a filmmaker. I'm like a gorilla and like super Hollywood. I'll sit in my chair all day too. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll work with whatever. I don't really, I don't, I don't matter. It doesn't matter to me at all. As long as the story's there, the emotion's there, it, it, it invokes emotion, it creates emotion, and there's something worth substance there. You know, um, it just depends. I mean, like, uh, for instance, uh, Chris Cornell, Long Gone, it was a video that I shot with him, uh, RIP Chris Cornell, you know, he was from Savage Garden, and, and, you know, my first, like, rock video, and we just shot it out all exterior, no bounce boards, no nothing, you know, just a red. And uh, we actually went snowboarding and we were, there was like the snowboarding hill right here. And then there was a street and then right across the street, there was like a little patch of snow. We just filmed him right there. So he looks like he's like in the middle of the wilderness, but he's really not. He's like right across the street from the snowboarding. So, uh, so yeah, that video is, I mean, there's a lot of videos that I have that are all, 
you know, exterior daylight. Like yeah. I, I, I don't mind. I, it just doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Um, but I try to have everything uh, have a style or some sort of aesthetic or, or color or just something that, that makes it stand out, you know? So. Do you have some lightning tips, like some special tips, tricks? Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, not, not really. No, I mean, nothing I can, I can really like it, break it down like this, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, always put the person to the back. Always put the, <laughs> I know, I know this is like the, like the complete opposite of what people do, but you're supposed to have the sun to the back of your head mm -hmm. and then take the picture from the front and then just have a bounce board or a white shirt or like a white cardboard box. Or if you have a really white friend, just have him just show his belly and just bounce that sun right back into your person's face. And that picture will be a lot better than if you have that person directly looking into the sun. That's the only tip I can give you. Remembering now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's just, I mean, because now, nowadays, sometimes I'll even point to this. I'll even have the sun hitting my face because it just, because I don't have a bounce board around me. Yeah, I want to ask you about the Instagram because your Instagram looks amazing. And... Are, you Are you trying to get up? My... <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and it's so important, like, now nowadays to, yeah, to be, you know like to work on your instagram to promote yourself in a good way and yeah so how do you maintain your account is it like does it take a lot of time because yeah um i mean for me i've always i've always had a brand i mean my myspace was branding you know the first video that um that got known which was little wayne gossip official music video was was all branding as well and then when i was over at ski with ski you know he was a genius with marketing we used to do the we used to go on like private jets and we'd bring two or three outfits with us and he and, and he would tell me to do it and, and then he would take pictures and we would post them when we weren't doing anything um so it was it, you know I, i learned a lot of stuff like that um and um and so for me like you know i don't know i, I was into it for you know you, just, you, got, you got to keep up with it because people don't even go to your websites anymore so that's i'm trying to figure out kind of like the in between of um you know posting like enough work on there but like not making it your end all be all because at the end of the day like there's a lot of people that i know who are really working who have like six followers and they're mm -hmm. directing feature films so at the end of the day does it really matter that much no it's i mean it's a popularity contest and yes if you are more popular you do get more opportunities but at the same time you still have to have the skill you still have to be ready to go with all that and um you know i think you should focus on really you know your 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 craft first and then if, if you need to use that as a marketing tool to bring work in just understand who you're what you're bringing in you know what i mean and what you're doing with it and, and have a purpose and have a goal and not, not just trying to get you know, validation because I did get lost and I did talk about this for a little while. You know, there was a time where I was signed to ICM. I was, I was as a feature film director, I had like 11 number one music videos and, uh, and I, I was really anxious and I was really nervous to shoot a feature film. And I was really like, um, I feared, I feared failing. So, uh, it was much easier for me to go to my meetings, say hi, kind of half ass it. And, you know, you know, count my, my Twitter reposts or my Facebook likes and, and, and feel good about that and validate myself and feel like, okay, I'm doing something, uh, you know, and it was like that for like six months, you know, and I really had to take a look at it. I'm like, what am I doing all this for? And this is before Instagram, this is before the numbers even meant anything. And I'm like, I didn't come out here to, to count my likes. Like I came out here to, you know, but, but it was hard, it, you know, it's, it's really hard. And so it's really easy just to post a picture and get all these, get all this validation and make you feel as if you were moving down that path. But if you're not careful, you will go down the path that's completely uh you know on the other end of a uh, spectrum of where you want to go so uh I, i do say just kind of be careful with that and um but but you definitely use it to you know to your advantage to get some work in um but there's plenty of other ways to get work in at least in the music video industry um you know besides doing that but uh but yeah I mean, definitely, definitely like for definitely. example which ways <laughs> like for example like say you're a music video director you haven't really done anything yet and you're trying to figure out you know you've done a lot of you know friend projects and smaller things and you want to figure out how, how you can get your first label video make sure you have a really good reel uh, it can even be 30 seconds or 15 seconds you know 30 seconds whatever it is make it short don't make it very long make it really short because no one's going to watch that long and if you don't have anything you don't have to go shoot these huge music videos just go shoot a five second shot for your reel Like just go shoot a bunch of those and put a reel together, like worst case scenario. And then what you do is go online and put video commissioners at record label 
And if you just Google that or you go to LinkedIn, you will find all these commissioners. And the commissioners are the ones at the record labels who actually, their job is to hire directors and, 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 and actually um, follow out the whole projects from, you know, from, from all the way down from, you know, from the top CEO picking, picking what songs. And then they, they, they flush it out to figure out what directors you just email them, say, Hey, I'm new. I'm, you know, if you ever have anything that I could write on, I would really, you know, be interested. Keep it short. Here's my reel. Boom. Do it to a couple of people. And I guarantee you, you will get something, you know, if not you, at least, you know, they'll at least say, Oh, I, I, you know, awesome. I'll keep you in mind. And then I, I guarantee you within a month or two, you'll, you'll get something to write on. And then you'll you'll put together a treatment, and then hopefully you know as you you know either get that one or you continue to do that, then something will pop off for you. Mm, it's a nice tip. I think I need to. And that's a way. That. That's, and, and that's a way better. It's a way better plan than trying to go on Instagram or like trying to like get because most of the time anyone who hits me up on Instagram list if they're not management. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like, like, like rappers or like people like, Hey, what's your rate, bro? Like, blah, blah, blah. like, and it's just, you know, you know, I got 200 bucks. Like, that's not what you want to do. You know, you'd much rather go to the, to the head of the label or go to the, to the commissioners. Cause they're going to say, Hey, I got, you know, even a small project for a commissioner is a five, eight thousand, ten thousand dollars $10,000, which might be a ton for you. You might not be ready for that, but it's okay. You know what I mean? Um, you can let them know that maybe they'll bring a producer in to help you. Um, uh, if they like your work enough, but as a, as a, Instead of DMing somebody back and forth about how much the rate is, and then you're like, hey, I got to edit. Well, this time, well, I need lights. You don't need any lights. You could just do it. I, I'm already shining, bro. You know, like it's not even <laughs> worth it. <laughs> so, you know. Do you sometimes get these kind of messages? I mean, like, I think well, everybody. Hey, do you look for someone or? Um, I think everybody does. You know what I mean? Um, like, it's just. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I think like, so like, for instance, my dad, you know, I brought my dad to a lot of music videos and my mom. And, you know, before they came to a music video of mine, they didn't know what a set was like. They, they were like, man, all this stuff is rented. The jewelry is not theirs. The clothes is not theirs. The, the, that car is not theirs. And they didn't know that, you know, they didn't know that until they went to a video. So a lot of people don't understand, like, you know, what it takes, you know, and, uh, and that's okay. You know what I mean? It's, you know. Um, but, uh, I always ask, I always ask, there's a couple of questions that, I, you know, I think this is the best way to like, uh, you know, navigate the, 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 the contacts. First, you want to ask them, um, when do you want to shoot? When do you want the video released? Or when are you looking to have the video released? What's your budget? Do you have any creative ideas? You ask them those questions and they're going to say, well, what's your rate? What's your rate? Don't respond. Like at that point it's over. You know what I mean? Like, cause they're not showing you respect. They're going to micromanage. It's going to be a pain in the ass the entire way. They're going to have some whack idea that they're already going to go with. They're going to give you 200 bucks and they're just going to micromanage the whole thing. It's going to be pulling teeth. So if they can't answer those questions, when, when would you like to shoot? When do, would you like to have the video released? What's your budget? And do you have any creative ideas? If they can't even just give you a couple of blurbs on that, you know, um, then, then, you know, automatically it's, it's going to be a complete headache. Now you can, you can do the project that's at your own risk, but just know that that thing, that project's going to be a, a hell zone. <laughs> yeah. Do you have something you would like to share or to tell our audience? Um, I mean, I just say, I mean, the only thing I can tell you guys is to, is to, you know, have, have a vision. What I always say is just have a vision. Don't have a dream. Don't, I mean, goals are just, Goals are just little, little markers. I mean, you know, the vision is the, is the end all be all. And you really want to be able to see wherever it is that you want in life, whether that's a family or whether that's, you know, a certain, certain career, you want to be able to see yourself there and, and then work your way backwards and, um, and understand it's going to be hell to get there. You're going to encounter everything that you always try to ignore and skip and turn away from it's going to come at you and it's going to come at you full throttle and it's going to ask you if you really want this or not so um so be prepared for that and if you really want it then you'll get there you know what i mean but uh you know the journey is the best part anyways i mean once you get there you're like okay that's that's already okay what am i doing now you know what i mean the journey is the best part so enjoy it definitely enjoy it so love it <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you